In the run-up to the election, he spearheaded a campaign through a make-believe digital intelligence agency dubbed the Hustler Nation Intelligence Bureau, or HNIB. And just over a year ago, he fell victim to a mysterious abduction that left him hospitalized with injuries. Dennis Itumbi says the abduction was politically motivated and accuses elements within the former president Uhuru Kenyatta's administration of perpetrating the attack. And though this, or rather his formal role in government, is unclear, Dennis Itumbi is today regarded as an influential state house operative who enjoys close ties with President William Ruto. Itumbi sat down for an interview with Citizen TV's Wahiga Mwaura. So Dennis, thanks so, so much for speaking with us. Dennis Itumbi styles himself as a digital strategist. After a stint in the media as a journalist, Itumbi caught the eye of the then Deputy Prime Minister Uhuru Kenyatta, who offered him his first political consultancy. And we became friends. And I got into the political space through the digital space to become a consultant for the campaign. We delivered that, and after that, as they say, the rest is a good tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to talk a bit more about the rest is a good tweet, because we then got to know you more as a digital strategist in State House, working for President Ru Kenyatta and the then Deputy William Ruto. But at some point, there was a falling apart. And whereas we knew you then as a staunch defender of President Ru Kenyatta, we then saw you crossing over and becoming now a staunch campaigner of Deputy President William Ruto. What caused that change? So, I think my, uh, the, the fallout with the President Uhuru Kenyatta was because he wanted me to stop supporting William Ruto for president. Like the Deputy President uh, Rigadi Gashago would put it, I am an honest man. So, I told him that I wouldn't do, Mr. President, with all due respect. I would wish to fulfill. I made a promise together with you because we were in that meeting together when we, that promise was made to William Ruto that we would support him to the end. So I was not going to go back on my word. After his fallout with retired President Uhuru Kenyatta, Itumbi shifted to the William Ruto campaign, setting up an online lobby group known as the Hustler Nation Intelligence Bureau or HNIB. That we managed to create an alternative media house, which was our biggest challenge. To be fair, uh, Waiga, the, the mainstream media, like happens in most transitions in many countries, was either not too friendly to us or was removed from the content which you are trying to put out due to their own housing, house policy. So to be fair, we didn't get, we, we, we didn't get as much mainstream support and coverage as you would have uh, as you would expect from a campaign so what we ended up doing is create alternative means of communication by the way most of the times i met my sources in hospital wards mm. uh, because then that was the most unimaginable place to meet if anywhere else we were heavily tracked and traced but we knew if you meet in a hospital uh, at the lounge before you get into the wards and sometimes in the wards we met and people gave stories there. Very few topics were off limits for the HNIB, and he rubbed prominent personalities, including cabinet secretaries, the wrong way. The reason why none of those cabinet secretaries went to court to sue us for defamation was because it was true. Because the first defense in a defamation case is truth. If any of them had we defamed people to a level where they felt we were, we were neither in the system, neither were we in the deep state, we were outsiders in government. When you hear the then head of state getting into a meeting and telling people that before you leave this meeting, I know HNIB and Itumbi will have the, me the, the message, means that it had gotten to the seat of decision making. How we got there, I can only say it was an experiment that went right. So transitioning that into now storytelling for government achievements is what has been our process. But from January, from mid-January, from January 15, you will see a whole new outfit that's coming up and it will be really refreshing, a new way of telling government stories. Three months into the term of the new government, Itumbi's formal role at State House remains unclear. Oh, my job is come here, go there. A very interesting job. <laughs> Uh, it's JD is to ensure that... They are contract with that job. Yes, 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 absolutely. Come here, go there. Uh, it's, uh, the contract is with the 
people of Kenya through the President of the Republic of Kenya. I mean, I, there is an obsession. You know, when uh, the President was campaigning, he said, we are asking for government, not for positions, but for delivery of stuff. So it's not about positions, it's about what we are doing. I mean, I, I was the chair of the technical committee for the tech and innovation for Jamuhuri. I'm sure you saw the differences. We brought the entire tech community in the world in Kenya. As you're well aware, I was in charge of the committee that uh, delivered the branding and the comms experience for the Hustler Fund. So the come here, go there thing is working very well and I'm a happy man. Is it voluntary or it comes with a salary? As of the moment, it's voluntary. Recently, Dennis conducted a charity event dubbed the Chapati Forum to mark one year since he went missing and was later dumped at Kasarani in Nairobi by unknown assailants. I'm sure I know the investigators, that's the DCI and the police will issue a statement within a short period of time on that investigation. I will therefore seek not to go into commenting about my own investigation, although I have a brief because I am the complainant and therefore I have some information that I get as a complainant. This was, as I said then, done by rogue police officers, some of them who fortunately are under arrest on a different investigation and have been charged in court. It, has also, it was also done at the behest and orders of senior rogue police officers. It has taken me time, but I can now say to you, Waihiga, and this is the first time I'm saying it, I forgive these people. I sincerely do. I want them to be, I want them to be all pinpointed. I want them to be identified. I hope there will be a state, uh, there will be a commission on state capture so that they are exposed. Dennis also blames rogue police officers for the disappearance of two Indian nationals, Mohammed Zaid Sami Kidwai and Zulfika Ahmed Khan, who have been missing in Kenya since July 23rd, 2022. We interacted with them in the course of campaigns and they said they had something to offer to the campaign. Like many other campaigns would do, we give them an opportunity to put in their input on what they had in mind. So they had some ideas around, uh, around the language, to the tonality of our social media and uh, basically graphics and uh, posters they wanted to develop. Out of the work they presented, we adopted 40% of what they gave us, and that was really significant in terms of some, they, they brought in some ideas on how you can shoot us some shorter videos and how you can edit them on a platform, which I won't mention now because we intend to continue using it. So they brought in some fresh ideas into this, and uh, it was unfortunate that uh, we have not heard from them ever since they disappeared after a night out. We still hoping to find them. We have brutal hope that they will be found alive. Their investigation is going on. Some DNA outputs are still going on. Um, actually, I know that uh, the entire criminal justice system is involved in ensuring this happens. I mean, as we wind down the interview, I remind Itumbi that his critics often blame him for withholding information on the disappearance of blogger Bogonko Bosire in September 2013. Most of the people who speak about Bogonko Bosire were not concerned about him when he was alive. These are all players who came when he was no longer being seen because there's also no confirmation on his death. But due to the lengthy disappearance, a lot of us believe the, the assumption that he's maybe dead. There's a brutal hope that one day he'll probably just appear and just being Bogonko say, I was neither the source, neither was I the target as his mantra was. But like Bongo used to say, the dwellers of the city do not understand the feelings of the village hunter. Bogonko's relationship with myself was too close. He went to a rehab. None of these guys who make a lot of noise around it was there when he was going to rehab. Bogonko Bosire at one time was kicked out of a job and had no job in town. I got him from there and got him a job in Uhuru Kenyatta's campaign. None of these guys making noise was there when he was suffering in the streets and doing all that bit. When he got lost, I am the one who 
looked for his Safaricom records, looked for his own Pesa records, got a cousin he used to stay with at, in South B, went to, I, to date I have contacts of MOG assistants almost in the entire country. As I try to get anybody that comes in, please call us in to check it in. In a recent media interview, Itumbi's mother, Catherine Wanjiko, described him as a radical since childhood, something he does not deny. My job is to be in the mud, swimming, doing the actual job, compiling, creating. Like in a, every good race, there are people who are cheering on the stands and there are people who are jeering. To all of them, that's not my focus. My focus is on the finishing line. Waihiga Mwaura, Citizen TV.